Hey, it's Jim. It's uh, Monday, January the 22nd, 2023. Just uh, bought a Subaru Forester Turbo. Um, I guess, unfortunately for me, I didn't know quite enough about what that code uh, P0011 meant when I bought it. Um, it is fairly high mileage. So, um, been kind of going through it, doing... Uh, oil change and air filter some kind of basic stuff that you do when you buy a, a car that you don't know um, and uh, with the uh, scanner I did uh, pick up a few codes that was one of them so I reset those after I was hoping that it was just because the guy had actually skipped an oil change before selling this thing but uh, it doesn't look like I got that lucky so um, I did pull the one banjo bolt <clears throat> on the uh, passenger side or the right hand side because it was the 001. I'm just going to flip you around and then uh, try and show you what I'm dealing with here. Okay, so P001 or P, yeah, 0011, sorry, um, is the... Um, it's like the variable valve timing actuator, and it's actually um, actuated by oil pressure. Uh, one of the things that happens is these banjo bolts. I'll just grab the one that I pulled out of there. Stand by a sec here. Okay, so this is the banjo bolt that lives in that hole. Um, originally they had screens on them. The uh, technical service bulletin is to remove that screen because they fall off and then it actually jams up the uh, actuator. Um, this is kind of a prick to get at. Um, it's actually in this housing there's a 10 millimeter bolt to pull out first. And then uh, there's a, where is it here? There's a hose, and I believe it's just a um, crankcase vent or something like that. But anyways, um, I had to pull that off to get enough room as well as the uh, bottle here for, I think that's for the intercooler, uh, to get at that one. Um, I think the guy's name was Pine Ridge that uh, I'd followed a little bit. Um, he made it look quite a bit easier because it was a different model than I'm working on. Mine's a 09 Forester. It's the XT with the turbo. So um, anyways, what I want to do is uh, switch those actuators over. And so um, from what I can tell, it looks like you need to uh, do a bunch of shit here. So uh, one was uh, basically to remove, oh, and I'm gonna do spark plugs too, but anyways, so the filler neck for your oil, it looks like you need to move that so that you can actually access the actuator. You can maybe see there's the bolt head, the 10 mm that you need to get just to pull the actuator out. Um, but anyway, so <clears throat> there's three 10 mm bolts here that uh, gets you enough room to be able to move the uh, secondary air pump, which is basically, it pushes air in when your car is idling to try and dilute the pollutants that are going out the exhaust. And that's all that does, but it'll give you a code as well. Uh, and I pulled the battery out so I'd have a little bit more room here. Um, disconnect a couple cables. This one's going to end up getting hit with some sensor cleaner just because it uh, had a bunch of oil residue on it. And I don't want that uh, connection getting compromised because of that. But anyway, with that out of there, now you can see the head of the banjo bolt. So I'll pull that. And... Uh, and then also remove and clean that actuator. I use carburetor cleaner. Uh, I think it's a little bit more um, appropriate on these actuators than brake clean is. Um, 
anyways, so that's kind of where I'm at now. And uh, I'll, I'll show you as I go here, I guess, but okay, catch you in a bit. Okay, uh, I'm back again. Just uh, wanted to show you here. So I, I pulled the uh, oil filler neck off. I ended up, uh, I think there was three bolts. One, two, three remove that <clears throat> now what i can see is uh where the oil gets filled into here there is some uh, uh globs of uh goop in there um sludge so that's not super great especially with these things that is one thing that uh messes up these actuators as well as the um, volume of oil that may or may not even be able to travel through those lines. So um, that's a little discouraging. Um, what I started to say before was that, uh, oh yeah, that actually um, was uh, the reason that I'm, I'm pulling the actuator on this side out, even though there wasn't a code was to be able to switch it to the other side. And then just like any process of elimination with stuff, if um, if the fault code travels to this side um, and I get a fault on uh, number two instead of number one, then I know it's actually the actuator uh, that's faulty. Um, up here, they're about 170 bucks through Rock Auto uh, for a quality one. And um, so I'll end up switching those over. If the fault, if this actuator, when I put it on to the right hand side of the SUV, also shows the fault on that side, then I'll know that there is the actual issue with the oil flow on that side so and uh like i said looking at some of the sludge that's uh in here uh yeah might not be good okay hey it's jim again so this is the actuator from the subaru from the uh driver's side cylinder two kind of area there um left hand side i guess just in case you're not in north america um anyways what i was going to show you here is uh testing these actuators um if you've got a multimeter you can uh put it on uh continuity and then just uh probe both ends and I'm hoping that uh, you'll be able to see right now it shows OL open loop and then when I uh, actually make a connection here it'll go up to whoops once I get on it good here 7.2 so apparently that's um, what you're looking for to actually prove that it is good um, <clears throat> the other one did test out fine too um anyways and then um after prodding around in here a little bit looks like this is kind of how these things work I'll try and get behind the camera here maybe um let's see maybe that'll do it so there's kind of these valves in here that uh move and i guess basically that is based on there's a spring that returns it and then the oil pressure would overcome that when it wants it to uh, change the timing. So, so I guess that's kind of how that thing works. Anyways, I'm going to clean this one up again with uh, some carburetor cleaner. As you can tell, I usually work on chainsaws and small motors, but uh, I guess the Subaru motor is not all that big. <clears throat> Looks like I'll take a chainsaw any day over a Subaru though. Hey there, it's Jim again. Um, so 
one of the other things I was going to show you guys is a couple more banjo bolt locations. So again, what a banjo bolt is, is basically it, it um, has a channel through it that allows the oil to pass through the bolt. And then normally they have a screen on the bottom of them. And the idea is that that filters out any chunks that uh, might be trying to plug these lines or the turbo itself. So there are a couple more locations at the back. This is the other one in there. It looks to me like uh, to, to access that one, um, I'm probably going to have to uh, pull the intercooler off, but if not, I may be able to get in from around the back. <clears throat> car has been parked for quite a while, so the turbo's cold, but uh, if you're doing it, just make sure that uh, you don't get burned there. Um, other than that, yeah, my lighting's not that good here. I did switch the uh, actuators over. I also used some dielectric grease in the couplings to try and ensure that... Uh, there is good contact there. I did check the uh, wires. <clears throat> they um, don't seem like they've been pulled out or anything, but uh, those are some common things. And then, uh, yeah, so like I said there, I switched the actuators from one side to the other. That way I'll, I'll know whether it was the actuator itself or, or not. Um, and then uh, I was looking at pulling, doing spark plugs today, but uh, I think I'm going to run this thing for a bit <clears throat> and then probably do a uh, new wiring harness um, when I do the plugs. So that'll be a different issue, separate day. But uh, I did uh, start to uh, try and make a bit more room here um, for that, and then I decided I'll leave it. So. I pulled the secondary air pump out. Um, I, I did see that uh, sometimes you can get codes with these and I did have some codes with that as well. So I also put the uh, dielectric grease on these connections so that, uh, and I actually sprayed this with uh, a sensor cleaner first to clean it up. Um, it kind of looks a bit sketchy and uh, it has had some oil on it so i was hoping to uh kind of clean that up and make sure i don't have any more issues so. okay all for now i guess okay so this is uh just the process of uh removing the one banjo bolt by the turbo was able to get in there with an extension and a short socket and uh we'll keep going okay we're basically back together again now Reassembled everything. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna put her outside, see how we make out, and uh, we'll get back to you. Guess one more one more thing before I sign off. Pretty sure the last mechanic working on this wasn't having any more fun than I am and somebody dropped a oil cap down in the <clears throat> belly pan there and uh when I'd uh, dropped of course it was a 10 millimeter I uh, was fishing around with the uh magnet but um anyway I was also able to see this thing kicking around down there so dragged that out but have a good one